Good morning, dear friends. Today, we are going to deal with a very fundamental principle in jurisprudence. Now, first of all, let's understand what is a jurisprudence. Now, a jurisprudence, the term jurisprudence is derived from the open word jurisprudentia, which means the knowledge of law. The term juris means law and prudence means knowledge. So, jurisprudence refers to the knowledge of law or study of law in the theoretical sense. Now, according to Salmond, Salmond is one of the greatest jurists of our times. According to Salmond, jurisprudence can be perceived at two levels. What are the two levels? One, jurisprudence in generic sense and two, jurisprudence in specific sense. Jurisprudence in the parayita niyamathina kuruchula jnana alengil arva uru jnana shakhe ayata namala niyamathina padikina dharma jurisprudence in the parayita. Salmond is the presence of jurisdiction in the two regions. Jurisprudence in the generic sense and jurisprudence in the specific sense. Jurisprudence in the generic sense refers to a study of all the existing legal system in the world. Their principles, their concepts. So it is the study of the corpus juris of every existing legal systems of the world. That is beyond our scope. That is an impossible task to study the principles of every existing system in the world. So, we usually study jurisprudence in the specific sense. Jurisprudence in the specific sense refers to the principles behind an existing legal system. They are the principles behind an existing legal system. So, it refers to a study of the nature and sources of law. It refers to the study of the concepts in law. So, in every law, you know, there are very important concepts. For example, uh, the concept of right, the concept of property, the concept of uh, ownership, possession. So, jurisprudence in the specific sense refers to a study of the principles in an existing legal system, which he calls the civil system. Upon a cheerier perspective, a narrow perspective, Salmon Parayinda, jurisprudence of the Parayinda. Principles in the specific sense. So, there is the broader concept of jurisprudence and the narrow concept of jurisprudence. Now, for LLB level and uh, usually when we study for law, we study the jurisprudence in the specific sense. Now, in jurisprudence, one of the starting point of the study is the basic three principles of jurisprudence. So, three principles of jurisprudence. So, there are so many classifications of jurisprudence, but there are three basic classifications of jurisprudence. That is what we are going to study today. You usually term them as three schools of jurisprudence. The three schools of jurisprudence. Now, uh, based upon certain uh, epical studies like the uh, study of Patton, Keaton, etc., uh, 
there are the jurisprudence is being classified at different levels. For example, uh, jurisprudence is classified into uh, uh, municipal jurisprudence and international jurisprudence. Again, jurisprudence is classified into uh, what do you call particular jurisprudence and general jurisprudence. But according to Salman, when one of the most important classification of jurisprudence is a classification on the basis of time and that is the three schools of jurisprudence, the fundamental schools of jurisprudence. Jurisprudence in a particular particular, general, municipal, international. Jurisprudence. Now Salman divides the jurisprudence into three on the basis of which the proponents of the three school analyzes law, views law, interprets law. Now, the three basic schools of jurisprudence are analytical school, historical school, and ethical school. Analytical school, historical school, and ethical school. Now, analytical school is often referred to the school of legal exposition. And the second historical school is referred to the school of history. And the third ethical school is often uh, referred to teleological school and also to theory of legislation. So these are the broad three schools of jurisprudence. From the point of examination, usually you get this as one of the first questions in jurisprudence explain the three schools of jurisprudence. Now I will start with first. The first school is analytical school. Now the proponents of the analytical school, they say that the aim of law or aim of jurisprudence is to study law as it is. That is study law as it is existing right now. That is you study the contemporary law. You analyze, see when you study law, you don't have to go to the uh, history of the law or how the law evolved. We don't have to study about the future of the law. You just study only the existing law. What is the law which is existing right now? You have uh, legislations, so, for example, in India, you have the Indian Penal Code, the Contract Act. You have uh, the transfer of property. You study them, you analyze them, you study them. You study the case laws with regard to that. You study the uh, important cases in this area. Only so much is required. You don't have to go more deep into that. You study the existing law, you analyze the existing law. This is the analytical school. So, the main proponents or main uh, persons of this school is, of course, uh, it starts or uh, the most prominent one is Austin. Then you have Salman, Jeremy Bentham, and to an extreme level it goes to Kelsen and his pure theory of law. But analytical School in the main Vaktakala the Varena, E. Perigal Abrams from the Gaya, Austin, Salman, uh, Kelsen, Binda. So, the focus of analytical school is that you study law as it is. You, you just keep on studying the existing law and you analyze. You don't have to uh, go more deep into it. That is the first school. The second school of jurisprudence is the historical school. 
Now, according to the historic school, when you study law, you have to study law with reference to its evolution in the history. Only then you will get a clear picture of what a law is. It is a history which gives you a clear perspective of the content of a law. That is what the historians see. For example, if you study Land Reforms Act, you can properly understand and evaluate the Land Reforms Act only if you study the history of the Land Reforms Act, how it evolved, what was the position before Land Reform Act. What were the grievances of the farmers? All these things. So they say that every, or, or you take another example, if you want to have a good idea of the English law, we have to study the history of evolution of the English law from the Roman law and the effect of Reformation, Renaissance, and all these things on the English law. But English law, Roman Roman law in the development of the land reforms act, Ariano and Degil, Charitra Vermai, Adanganabadu in the particular. So, this is the method of history or the school of history. They say that a page of history is worth volumes of logic. Charitra in every page on the Varayan. The analytical title of the chapter Because a page of history is the life of hundreds of persons, their experiences. That is why we say that a page of history is worth volumes of logic. So study law with reference to its history. Now the main proponent of the historical school was Savigny. S-A-V-I-G-N-Y. Savigny. According to Savini, law evolves. There is organic growth to law. Savini Parayana, the Niyama Jeevan in the Dana, the Walanu Dirikiana. According to Savini, law is the manifestation of the will of the people, which he calls vote geest. Savini Parayana, the Niyamun Parayana, the spirit of the people, Manishanade Atma, a legal jeeva, Uru Sankal Patil in the Varinara. It evolves from the spirit of the people. Now, according to Savini, laws are not to be made, they are to be found. So, Savini say that every law is existing in this. Uh, uh, society as four gaze of the spirit of the people, there is a spirit of the people and the law is existing in the society. What we have to do is only to find out the spirit of the people. Only when it is accepted by the people, then it gets transformed into a legislation. Samohatinde or Atma or Atma under the Yamatinde, summoned the chair. A brother, Niamatin number contact the game. Aduri Protega, our still children, number other act item, rule item, okay, adopt you. Adri Mumpa than it is existing. So that is why he says that law has to be found and not made. So Samini was a very important person with regard to historical jurisprudence. Now, uh, another person in England, uh, there was another jurist by the name, Sir Henry May. He was the main proponent of the uh, analytical school, uh, I mean, sorry, historical school in England. There is a very important quotation by Henry May, uh, the uh, evolution or development of the society is from status to contract. That is one uh, important uh, statement made by me. I think it was me. Now, he has wrote certain books like uh, The Village Communities and uh, uh, Ancient Law, 
village communities, ancient law. These were wonderful uh, books uh, written by uh, Sami, uh, 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 evaluating the concept of uh, uh, historical school and its uh, relevance in contemporary law. So that is the second school, that is uh, the historical school. So we have seen, first the analytical school who studies law as it is. Second, uh, the historical school who says that uh, you study law with reference to the past. Only then we can understand it better. And this third school is the ethical school or the teleological school. Ethical school says that they give more uh, importance to the ideals in the society. They give more importance to a creation of an ideal society. Ethical school or whatever in the Namaka would ideal item a Samuhat in a Vartad Gan and other election. Never the election than a Uru Nala Samuhat in Ondaki Gan. So to the ethical school, law is just a one moral code. Law is a moral code. That is how a citizen should behave. It is a code, a moral code. And the ethical school says that instead of studying what law was or instead of studying what law is, we should be concerned more of what the law ought to be. Ethical school is another. In the Hindu name of the 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 name of so they say that they give more importance to the ideal society and the ideas in the society. Those, they give more stress to the concept of justice. So the ethical proponents of the ethical school, they, uh, they, their focus is on the relationship between the law and justice, the difference between law and justice, methods of attaining justice, uh, methods of attaining an ideal society. These are the area of focus of ideal, uh, I mean area of focus of the teleological or the ethical jurisprudence. So in ethical jurisprudence, they are looking forward they give more importance to creation of new, new laws. New laws which can be created to prevent the existing inequalities and problems in the society. So, these are the three basic schools of jurisprudence based upon one classification of Salman that is a classification based on time. As I told you earlier, there are other classifications wherein you have sociological jurisprudence and all these things like that. But these are the fundamental three classifications of jurisprudence. So thank you so much.